Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to continue talking about Niagara and beam emitters in Unreal 4. Specifically, we're going to talk about how we can use blueprints and user parameters with our beam emitters. Now, the emitter that I'm using is an emitter that I created in the first video, but there's two slight differences. So in the beam emitter setup, I'm not using beam tangents, and I've also added this curl noise force. It's what's giving this wavy appearance for my beam emitter. Now, with all that out of the way, the first thing I want to do is I want to go and create a Niagara system so that eventually we can use it in our blueprint. But there's a few things we need to cover first. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to right click on my Niagara emitter and I'm going to create a Niagara system. And we'll just name it correctly. So it says NS. And I'm going to drag this out into the world. Back up a little bit. We'll drag it out. And now there's something you should notice right away. And that's if we move our Niagara system, our beam isn't actually moving with it. Now, if that's what you want, that is totally fine. But in my case, I want this beam to move with my Niagara system, wherever I move it. Now, there's a reason why it's like this though. So if we come back to our Niagara emitter and we take a look at our beam emitter setup, you should see in beam start, we made this into a vector and XYZ is zero, zero, zero. And then below that is absolute beam start and it's turned on to true. So what this is saying is that your beam start is going to be at absolute world position zero, 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 always. So if we move this out of the way, just to try some things out, let's turn off absolute. And if we hit save, our beam moves back. It moves back to the origin of our system. But it's still kind of animating. It's still kind of moving to the left. So what I want to do is I'm going to turn absolute beam start back on and then the beam start, I'm gonna click on the drop down, and I'm gonna search for simulation position. Now, this is what's usually in there by default. When you add a beam emitter setup, simulation position is already there. And what this is saying is, you will absolutely always be at the simulation start. You'll be at the emitter start. So let's take a look at that now. And what you'll see is, this actually doesn't look any different. Now, there's another reason why this is happening. So if we look at our beam end, X, Y, Z, in our X, I have this going from zero to 180 over time. And then Y and Z are set to zero. But we have absolute beam N turned on. So over time, our endpoint is trying to get to absolute world position 180. So if we turn this off and we save it, we can take a look. Now, this looks a lot more like what we would expect. Perfect. So now I want to take a look at our Niagara system. So I'll open that up. And what I want to do in here is, in our beam emitter setup, I actually want to get rid of everything that's in beam end. This way we can add a user parameter in here, and then we can use that user parameter in our blueprint. So with that cleared out, we'll come to our user parameters, and we're going to add a new parameter based on a vector. And we'll leave everything in here as the default. 000 is fine, but I'm going to rename this. And now you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine beam end. And then we'll come back to beam emitter setup. And we're going to change this beam end into that user parameter. So I'll search for beam end. And now it's in there. And you'll see that this just looks like an orb. And that's because our start position and our end position are essentially zero. So now let's go and create our blueprint. So I'll minimize gonna right click, create blueprint class. We're gonna base it on an actor and then we'll name it BP, whatever you wanna call it. And then we'll open that up. Now, like usual, we're gonna add our Niagara system. So under add component, we're gonna search for Niagara particle system and we'll just leave the name as it is. But in the details panel, we'll come to Niagara system asset. We wanna add our Niagara system that we just made. So in my case, it's ns underscore beam. And as soon as you add it, it should show up. You should see it. So now there's a few different ways that we can go about moving that endpoint. And the first way is gonna be through a construction script. So I'm gonna drag out our Niagara system, a reference to it. And then off of that, we wanna search for set. And specifically, we want set Niagara variable vector three. And now once we have that, 
in the in variable name, this is where we put our user parameter. So I'm going to type in user dot whatever you named it. So mine was user dot beam end. And now we can put whatever we want into this in value. You, know, you can leave it as it is and adjust these numbers. But in my case, I want to base this off of another component. So I'm going to add another component and I'm going to search for an arrow. Then we'll leave the name as it is. And then I'm going to drag out a reference to that arrow. In this arrow, I'm going to type in get location. And we want to get world location. And now with that location, we can take that and put it into the end value. So let's plug our construction script in and we'll compile and we'll save. And now if we come to our viewport, we'll grab our arrow. If we move this, our beam end is moving. This is cool. Yeah. But we need to test this. We need to actually bring this into the world to make sure it's working correctly. So let's minimize and we'll get rid of our Niagara system. And let's try out this blueprint. And right away, as we move this around, you can tell that something weird is going on here. Something isn't working correctly. And once again, there's a reason for this. So if we come to our Niagara system and we take a look at our beam emitter setup, in this case, we want to have absolute beam end turned on so that it's absolutely grabbing the location of our arrow. So we'll turn that on and we'll hit save. And now let's take a look at it. And now you can see that this is showing up correctly again. So it's really going to depend. You are going to have to flip flop every now and then between absolute and not absolute, absolute relative. So let's take a look at our blueprint one more time and we'll just double check our construction. So let's, let's move this arrow a little bit further, we'll compile and it's updating just fine. So now I actually want to set this arrow back to zero. So it's not in the way. And I want to go over the other approach. So we're going to go to the event graph. And now if you follow some of my tutorials before, I like to base things off of keyboard presses. You know, that way we can debug really fast and test things out. So I'm going to get rid of these events, but off of event begin play, I'm going to enable input. And then off of the player controller, I'm going to get player controller. So we have a reference to the player start, the player controller, and now we just need a key. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to type in keyboard and you can use whatever key you want. I'm going to use B just because. And now we're going to do the exact same thing we did for the construction script. So I'm going to drag out a reference to our Niagara system. Then off of here, I'm going to search for set and then we want a vector three. And then the in variable name, this is our user parameter. So user dot beam end. And now instead of using that arrow that we used before, I want to make another arrow. So I'm going to search for arrow and we'll just name this one arrow event. And we'll even change the color over here, something purple. And now we'll drag a reference out and we will get that world location. We'll type in get location, get world location. And now this location will go into our in value. And now when we press B, we'll set this. So let's compile and save and let's go take a look. So let's play. We'll find it. Oh, there's one thing we forgot back in our blueprint in the viewport. We actually need to move this. So we'll set it somewhere, somewhere here and we'll move it up. And now let's compile and save. And now let's play and check it out. We'll hit B and it moves. Cool. Now, if you want to add some bells and whistles, you could do that. So in my case, I'm going to come back to the blueprint. And now what I want to do is I want to be able to press B and animate from the start position to an end position. And then when I release, I want it to go back to the start position. So we already have an end position. That's our arrow. So we're just going to move that out of the way. As it turns out, we already have a start position as well. And that's going to be our Niagara system. So if we get a reference to that, just copy this over here and we'll put this one on top. So we have the start going first and we get the world position for this. So we have our end and we have our start 
Now we just need to lerp between them. So I'm gonna drag off of this pin and I'm gonna look for lerp and we should get lerp vector. And now we can plug in the start point and the end point. And then this is going to be based on an alpha. So zero is going to be the start point, And then when we get closer to one, it's gonna be the end point. But now we need something to drive this alpha. And the way that you can do that is with a timeline. So I'm gonna right click and you scroll all the way down, you just see add timeline. And now we just give this, give this a name. We'll just call this vector. And then we're gonna double click it and we wanna add a track here. So we're gonna add a float track and we're just gonna call this vector lerp. And we'll change the length. We'll make this three seconds. And now we need to add some keys. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna add a key. And we're gonna make this so it starts at zero and the value is zero. And then we'll add our second key and the time is going to be three and the value is going to be one. So over the course of three seconds, we're gonna go from zero to one. And now back in our event graph, we should have that vector. So we're gonna move this up here. So when we press B, we're going to play this and then we're going to update our Niagara variable. And then the vector lerp is going to drive the start position and the end position. So we'll just plug this location now into the end value. So that covers pressing it. What about releasing it? All we need to do is just take released and put it in to reversed. So now let's go take a look at what we have. So let's compile and save. And we'll just minimize this and let's go play. We'll just take a look here. All right, it's not doing anything. And we'll hit B. We're holding it, we're holding it. And now we'll release it and it goes back. And we'll do it again just because it's cool and we'll release it. So yeah, there you go. All right guys, if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.